Hey there, welcome to EVD Studio. My name is Elizabeth. I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. And this is just an update of some of the things that I've been up to, some of the things that I've been working on. Um, some of them are successes and some of them are fails. So you'll wanna see that. Uh, but first of all, I have a couple of events coming up this summer that you'll probably be interested in. So the first one is actually coming up uh, next week and it is Quilt 2024 Summer Camp. So what this is, this is an online event and there are uh, quilting and quilting related workshops from a whole bunch of different teachers and I am one of them. And you can actually watch all the workshops for free. To do that, you have to sign up and then you'll have to watch it on the specific day that is offered. Now, there are upgrades available if you want to have access to them after the summer camp time. So you can get access, um, I think for a couple weeks or for some months. So you can check on if you're interested in purchasing an access pass. So if you see a workshop and you really like it and you say, I'd like to come back and see that again later, then you can get an upgrade, but it's not required. You can see all the workshops for free. So you can check in the link below to get more information about that. And the workshop that I'm going to be teaching is a Friendship Star window hanging. So this is a stained glass window hanging. It's made with reversible patchwork Pujagi seams. And so it's just a single layer of fabric, but it looks like stained glass when it's hanging in a window. So you can see one sample that I have here. This is a sample from um, the workshop. And that one, it looks really nice, like the green and purple fabric. And I have another sample that I made. That's this one. And this sample, um, actually, I just kept it as is, but there was a little problem with it. So you can see on this part, everything looks nice. And I had originally planned to have all the stars be in the same orientation. But if you see on the other part of it, these stars are in different orientations. So when you see the whole thing, you can see one of the stars is actually rotated a little bit and I didn't notice till it was finished hanging in a window and I took a picture of it and then went, ooh. So um, I'm not gonna take it apart. I'm not gonna fix it. It still looks great. It is fine. So I'm keeping that as a, uh, um, a fun variation of what you might want to do because you can orient these stars whatever direction you want in the project. So you won't want to miss that workshop. Um, so it's a workshop that is a great introduction to this technique, or if you've done the technique before, then it's just great for um, working with triangles, uh, working with stars and making a fun little project. So you will want to check out information about that. Um, the other thing I have for July is my block of the month. So this is part of Quilt Block Mania, which is a bunch of quilt designers. And each month we design a block based around a specific theme. And so many of the designers make um, different like applique or paper piecing and they take the theme pretty literally. I am pretty loose with the theme, depending on what the theme is. So in July, the theme was books. And so some people did like piles of books or something like that. Uh, but the blocks that I've been doing this year are all traditional blocks and I've embellished them with hand embroidery. And so I was a little bit um, puzzled I thinking, what am I going to do that's a traditional quilt block that has to do with books? And so I started going through some of the quilting resources that I have and looking for blocks. And then I found there is a quilt block that has a few different names, but one of the names is Black Beauty. And if you like children's books, you'll know that there is a 
classic book called Black Beauty and it's about a horse and it's actually told from the point of view of the horse and it goes throughout the horse's life. And this book actually was kind of influential and for impacting how people treated animals. So it was one of the early influences to help with humane treatment of animals and what to do with that. And so Black Beauty is the name of the quilt block. And so I took variation of the Black Beauty quilt block. And so my block of the month for July is this one. And it is called Under the Apple Tree. Uh, because it's Black Beauty and it's thinking about Black Beauty in the field with apple trees. And um, so this is a really fun block. It has a lot of pieces in it, so it looks kind of complicated, but if you take it a step at a time, it's not too complicated. It has this sawtooth star in the middle and then these colorful pieces kind of go out from the middle and then it's just accented with this embroidery. So this is um, a really fun block. The pattern is available for free in the month of July. And then after that is for sale in my shop. So um, you can get that. The link below is for that. Um, if you'd like to make it. And if you wanna see all the other coordinating blocks that I've done for this year, then you can check that out. Um, so, uh, let me know if you know of another traditional quilt block that might have gone with the theme of books because I was pretty stumped on this one, but I'm really happy with how that block turned out. So if you have any other ideas for something different I could have done, I would love to hear it because it took a bit of thinking to come up with that one. So something else I've been working on is in August, I'm participating in ex embroidery extravaganza. So this is an online event and it is hosted by CNT Publications and it's a creative spark event. And so this is going to be a live workshop. So this is something I will be teaching live um, and it is not a free event. This is something that is a pay to join, um, but there's me and there's a bunch of other embroidery teachers and designers. And so this is gonna be fun, but I'm making a bunch of samples for this workshop because of course I can't stitch the whole thing in my 40 minute class live. So I'm gonna have to have uh, samples of some of the steps along the way so I can show from one to the other all the way to the finished project. So my piece that I'm going to be doing is a shape sampler and so this is um, it's a fun embroidery project where you have a shape and then you fill it in with stitches and I'm not going to give away all the secrets because you can come to my workshop but here are some of the samples that I've been working on. So this was one sample that I did and I decided I'm not gonna be using this as my project, but this is a variation of the project. So I will be talking about it and explaining it. And then this was really disappointing. This was a sample that I made and I had used water soluble marker on this. And when I got this piece wet to erase the water soluble marker, um, you can see the color from the thread ran and I was really disappointed. I've used this thread before and I haven't had a problem, but it just seems like something in the red was a bit too much. Um, and so I've washed it again a few times and it does seem to be lightening up. So probably if I wash this a bit more, the red will probably come out it is starting to fade already but that was so disappointing when i came back to see it and i saw red dye had run all over the fabric so this is still a really nice piece it's not totally ruined i can still use it um, but it was just disappointing to see that the dye had run from there so if you want information about that embroidery uh, workshop then there's a link below for that as well. And you can get more details about my workshop and all the other teachers that are gonna be there. So an event that just finished a couple of weeks ago was Quilt Canada. And that is always a great event. 
Quilt Canada is one of the biggest quilt shows or probably the biggest quilt show in Canada and people come from across the country and from other countries that every year and it moves in different locations every year. So this year it was in Edmonton which is a city that I had never been to before and so that was always um, exciting to go to a new um, city and see new things. Uh, it was really fun experience because also the hockey team, the Edmonton Oilers, were in the Stanley Cup playoffs and I happened to be in the city during a couple games that they won. I am not a hockey fan, but it's just exciting to be in a city that's so excited and cheering for their team. So that was just a really fun experience. And I taught three different workshops. I taught the maple leaf window hanging and the flower window hanging and the Prajagi improv window hanging. So those were fun workshops. I think people enjoy them and had a good time. Uh, and um, for those of you who saw me there and came and said hello, it was so nice to see people who I have either met only online or only through email. It's really nice to see people in person. So thank you for those who came to say hi. And then of course I was able to do the vendor haul. And so I have a little stash of things that I got. So I didn't get too much stuff, but of course, if you're out of quilt show and there's a vendor hall, you have to um, get a couple things. So I'm just gonna share what I got and see what you think. So the one was this fabric bundle and I do not buy very many fabric bundles and fabric collections, but this one, I just love this one. This is from Tilda and it is Creating Memories, Spring and Easter Pastels. Um, and so I love this one. I do have an idea for a project for this. Um, the project's actually pretty small, so I won't be using all of this, but then I'll be able to make other uh, coordinating projects with that. So I got this fabric, really love that. Uh, and then um, I got this. <laughs> So this is just a board for storing rulers. So I was able to fit this into my suitcase. Just squeeze it in on the diagonal. And this is from You and Me in Stitches. Um, and so this is really nice uh, way to store rulers. I was looking for this specifically. This was on a list that I was things of this was on a list of things that I was looking for. And so I was happy to be able to find that and to bring that back. Um, this is something, this Acorn Easy Precision Piecing System. I'm really excited to try this. I've seen this before for precision piecing and I've never really tried it. And I didn't really know that it would do that much for me but I had somebody in my workshop was using it and it was really great. So um, when the student showed me and then I saw it in the vendor hall, I thought I should give this a try myself because it seemed to be really helping my student. So this is made up with a liquid that you can put on your seams to help with pressing, to help with um, getting things lined up and there are a couple of different applicators there's this little point applicator and this one in the middle that i was excited about it's kind of like a marker it looks like a felt tip marker or a highlighter and so you can like write on your seam so i will be sharing more about what i think of this once i've tried it but um the student that i had in my workshop was really enjoyed it and she sold me on it enough to try it so this is from it's the acorn precision piecing system and i got it at um just one of the vendors that sold in a lot of different stores so i will be giving updates on that one and then of course i went by the wonderful booth wonderful threads is one of my favorite um, places to go i love their thread and that was not the thread that the color ran in my project. Um, so I got a little collection of um, number eight pearl cotton. So I was able to pick out those colors. 
And then I got these. These are um, a thread that they call Fruity. And it is like a 12 weight, um, kind of pearl cottony. Um, this is a fun thread for a lot of different projects. It's a good substitute for um, maybe two strands of embroidery floss. Um, so it's not divisible. It's just one, one strand, but I got a bunch of variegated colors. Um, this one did have five, but I've actually opened the one and I've used a lot of it already. So I've already been using these. Um, then also from Wonderful, I got these. This is a new thread that I have. It's called Athena and it is just a cotton thread. So I'm excited to try this for some quilting and piecing and we'll see how that works out. And I got this little kit from them. It's from Wonderful. Um, but it is made from Aster Ann and this is a little felt um, piece and they can this uh, So it comes with felt and then you can embellish it with your own embroidery applique Whatever you want and this can be used to make either a needle book or a little carrier for business cards or just some kind of small um, wallet like that so um, This will be fun. I haven't decided if I'm going to use it as a business card holder or for as a needle book. I haven't decided yet, but either one will be something useful that I can use. Then also from Wonderful, I got some rinse away design sheets. So these are sheets that I can print the embroidery pattern in my printer and then stick it on, stitch and then take off. So this is really helpful for if you're doing embroideries and you can't mark your design right on your fabric, or if you don't want to mark your design right on your fabric, it's an easy way to have an image to stitch and then it will go away completely. So I was excited to get some of these to try and, and I will let you know how that turns out. Uh, I got this little thing I just got because it was so cute and I can't even remember where I got it but this is a little um, a little birdie needle threader so it has a needle threader on one end and it has a cutter on the other end so it looks like just a fun little thing to have for um, hand stitching I got this fabric. This is from a Canadian fabric designer and she had a booth with all her fabric and I can't remember her name. I don't have it here, but these fabrics are all with little strawberries. And so my husband actually grew up on a strawberry farm and so he loves strawberry and strawberry branded things. So I got these um, and I'll probably make a little something for him with those, with all the strawberry fabric. And then I stopped by the Water Girl Quilt Co. booth. Uh, Michelle from Water Girl, she actually had some of my patterns for sale in her booth uh, because I did not have a booth in the vendor hall. I was teaching, so it was great to have a presence there. Um, and so, that if people wanted my patterns, I could say, hey, go over to Water Girl. And so I, I went by Water Girl and then I was checking out all the other things they have. And they, of course, they have lots of fabric, they have lots of notions and tools, but Michelle is getting into carrying embroidery things. So I was excited about that because I do quilting and embroidery. So I was excited to see a quilt shop that is getting into carrying embroidery um, supplies. So the one thing I got, and because I never heard of this, but this is a Canadian company, Trailhead Yarns, and this is called an Unkit. So this is just fabric with an embroidery design on it. So it doesn't come with stitch diagrams, it doesn't come with thread, um, there are, are thread sets that you can purchase separately. It doesn't come with a hoop. All it is is fabric with a design. So um, if you're somebody who doesn't need a whole kit, you have lots of thread already, you have hoops, then this is a nice way um, to get 
just a design so you don't have to buy a whole kit if you don't need the things that are in the kit. So it's an economical design. So I was excited to try this. Um, it says it's water-based ink and it, it just comes in the envelope like this. So I will try out this embroidery and see how that works. And of course, with this kind of design, there's lots of different ways that you can embroider that. And so if you go on their website, Trailhead Yarns, you can see samples of what different people have done with the design and then decide how you wanna stitch it. So if you are more confident in your embroidery that you know different stitches, you have your own ideas, then this is a great option. It's, um, if you're a beginner and you feel like you need step-by-step -step instructions, then this might not be the thing for you. But once you've done a couple kits and you're more confident and comfortable, then this will be really fun. And then the last thing is something I was super excited about. I've never seen anything like this, but once you see it, it's such an amazing idea. And it's this frame and it's from a company called Modern Hoopla. And I purchased this from Water Girl Quilt Co. again. And so it looks like it's just a frame. But on the back, you can see it's designed so that you can take your fabric and your hoop and just put it right in there. And then you can use a couple of pieces of cardboard to hold your hoop in place. So you can see that makes your embroidery look like it is professionally framed. It looks, um, it looks so much fancier than just having it in the hoop. So if you're gonna hang it on the wall, it's just a really nice product. And these come in all different sizes and different shapes and different stains on the wood. So this one is a six inch round. Um, and so if you have seasonal embroidery pieces, like here's fall, and then oh, here's another fall. You can see you can easily switch your embroideries around depending on your season. And it, it looks really good, but it's not permanently mounting it in a frame so that you can switch things around. So this I was excited about. I do want to get more of these. So I'll probably be contacting Water Girl to see if they have more. And then this is another fun little um, product from Modern Hoopla. And it's gonna look a little bit weird just because of how my things are in the frame, but it is a, a hoop holder. So you can put it down, you have your hoop, and then you can just set your hoop in it and it displays like that. So of course this is upside down because that's how I have it in the hoop. But if, now that I know this, if I was going to frame it for use in here or put it in the hoop for use with this, I would put the hoop on the other way. And you can see it just sits there. So that's another really nice way to display a hoop other than hanging it on the wall. So that is um, another project that I was really excited about. So I had a great time at Quilt Canada. Thanks to everybody who said hi to me and um, I like the stash of things that I got and I can't wait to use some of them. So um, I hope you're having a great summer. I hope you get a lot of sewing done and be sure to check out the embroidery extravaganza and the quilt 2024 summer camp. And you can see both of those um, workshops. I have another surprise coming up in August that I can't tell you about, but follow my channel and then you'll hear about that. So um, have a great summer and I'll talk to you soon.